in this special place. Dr. J and his family are on vacation for one more day. He'll be back in the office tomorrow and in the pulpit next Sunday. But in the meantime, we are blessed to have Reverend Todd Love, the district superintendent of this South Central District of the United Methodist Church here with us this morning to bring a wonderful message and I know that you'll be blessed by that. So good to have you here. I want to just uh, lift up to you if you are a guest with us this morning in front of you there are get connected cards in the pew backs and we invite you to fill one of those out let us know that you've been here let us know how we might reconnect with you to share with you about the ministries of this church in whatever way you would like us to do that those also serve as wonderful prayer cards you can fill that out put it in the offering plate and we will lift up all of your prayer concerns in prayer this week I believe those are all of our announcements today, and so I ask you to turn your hearts and your minds to worship as Julie shares this prelude with us.
As we go to the Lord with our call to worship this morning, I invite you to stand and join in that call to worship. You may find that in your white hymnal on page 137. Your white hymnal, page 137. Let us call upon the Lord this morning. The Lord reigns. Let the nations tremble. Great is the Lord. He is exalted over all nations. Let them praise his great and awesome name. And let us continue to praise our holy God and praise his great and awesome name with number 139, Great is Thy Faithfulness. And now, as one body in Christ, let us affirm our faith with the Apostles' Creed found in your bulletin. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection. 
resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. Good morning. Our scripture reading this morning is 2 Timothy 2, verses 8 through 13. It can be found in your pew Bible on page 1178. Remember Jesus Christ, raised from the dead, descended from David. This is my gospel for which I am suffering, even to the point of being chained like a criminal. But God's word is not chained. Therefore I endure everything for the sake of the elect, that they too may obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. Here is a trustworthy saying, If we died with him, we will also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. If we disown him, he will also disown us. If we are faithless, he will remain faithful, for he cannot disown himself. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And now as we prepare our hearts and our minds to go to prayer with the Lord this morning, I invite you to join in singing the fourth verse of number 688 in your white hymnal, Savior, like a shepherd, lead us. Let's pray. Creator and sustainer God, you call us from our every day to this special day, this Sabbath day set aside for rest and for worship. We confess that we often find it hard to do either of those things very well, but we are here and we offer ourselves in this time of worship as a gift to you. We know that this is not a one-sided relationship, and while we are giving of ourselves in worship, you are giving as well. Let us receive all that you're offering in this time. Open our hearts to receive your love. Open our minds and our ears to receive your word, and soak into our spirits as we rest in your presence. No one understands the weight and the worries that we carry better than you do, God. And you've promised to take our burdens from us if only we would give them up. Forgive us for holding on to those. Forgive us for our stubbornness as we try to go it alone. Increase our trust in you to handle all that comes our way. Because you are already there in the midst, not as an uninterested observer, but as a loving parent, wholly invested in us, and in the circumstances that we are facing. 
Hear our prayers today for the burdens that we carry and the challenges we face. For those with health concerns, God, we ask that you would give strength and healing. For those of us facing a fear of the future, we ask that you would give us assurance and direct our steps. For those of us who are struggling under the burden of lost hope, give us a vision to see all of the good that you have planned for us, just as your word is promised. Help us to look forward with anticipation as we remember who you are and all that you have already done. We thank you for the summer rain. We thank you for all of our freedoms, especially the fact that we can come and worship you openly and freely this morning. We thank you for the time we have with family. We thank you for all the safe travel that you've granted, especially for that of our mission team as they've been away and returned to us safely this past week. We thank you for our upcoming Vacation Bible School for each child and each volunteer who will be a part of it. And God, whether it is here in this place, at Vacation Bible School, <clears throat> in our workplaces or in our homes. We ask that you would fill us with so much love and grace that it cannot help but pour out of us the broken vessels that we are. We thank you for who you are, for your faithfulness, your grace, and your love. We thank you especially for your son Jesus, our closest friend and our only savior. It is in his precious name that we pray together the prayer he taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. At this point in the service, I always remind us that we are giving back from what God has already given us. And so one way that you can give back is if God has blessed you with a strong back today, we would ask you to stay after the service for just a few moments as we clear everything off of the platform to prepare for Vacation Bible School. That's one way that you can give back. Another way is through the giving of our tithes and our offerings, so I invite our ushers to come forward at this time to receive those.
Would you bow your heads with me, please? Dear gracious, loving God, great is your faithfulness, Lord. And in singing that lovely hymn this morning, let us just remember that you call us to be faithful in everything that we do, in the tithes that we offer because of we are being obedient to you, in our gifts because we are seeking out those that are lost, Lord, and wanting to lead them to you, Lord, with the message that we live out in our lives, the way that we do things daily, Lord, not just on Sundays, but in every day, everywhere that we go. May we show you to the world. Help us to do that and to do it willingly and lovingly. We ask that you take these gifts and our ties and just lead all the laws to you, Lord. There are so many. Help us each day, each one. I know you rejoice, and we rejoice with you. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, kids, it's time for our time together, but today is pretty special. I need you all to sit on the front row. Could you sit up on the front pew back there by Miss Valerie? Y'all sit on the pew up there. We're going to have you do something special. Sit on the pews right there. See the empty spots? Jordan, you, you can sit back in your, in your regular seat. I'm going to have you guys do something really special. Hey, Luke, would you sit there by Owen? Okay, guys, right here on the front row. On the front row. I'm changing it up, and it's confusing everybody. All right, so as they're getting settled... You guys may already know that our, our superhero, Hero Central Vacation Bible School starts tomorrow. And so at this time, I would like to invite all of those who are volunteering with Bible School to come up and stand here in front of the altar rail on either side. If you're volunteering with Vacation Bible School, would you please come up and stand? All right. This is about how Bible school goes. We, we get it in gear. All right. Before you are these wonderful men and women who have volunteered to spend their week with us this week, uh, leading our children, teaching them about the love of Christ. And so we want to um, spend a moment dedicating them to their service and offering a word of prayer for them. Okay, kids, be listening, because you're going to have an important part here in just a minute. Our verse for this week is from the Psalms. It says, do good, seek peace, and go after it. The persons before you are dedicating themselves to leading students of all ages into a deeper relationship with God through Jesus Christ as they empower our students to discover their strength in God. These leaders will become superheroes to the children of the church and community in the coming days. Our prayer is that God will endow each of you with the attributes of the biblical heroes from our VBS Hero Central program. Each night of the week, we are going to learn about a different characteristic that God's heroes have. Monday night, God's heroes have heart. God gives a heart of love for the children God's heroes have courage. God gives courage to the task before us, to lead and share the good news of the love of the children. God's heroes have wisdom. God's heroes have hope. God, we place our hope in you. Let us share hope with the children. God's heroes have power. I would ask our volunteers now if you would turn and kneel as you're able to here at the rail. We're going to offer a prayer for you. Okay, kids, here's your part. 
I want you to find a volunteer. It doesn't have to be your mom or your dad or your grandpa or your uncle or your brother. Whoever you can find, come up and lay a hand on someone's shoulder. All right? Just pick somebody. Come up and, and put a hand on somebody up here who's going to be working with you this week. You all are going to help bless them by doing that. All right, let's pray. Gracious God, thank you for these whom you've called to your service. Raise up heroes among us. Give each leader a kind and compassionate heart for each child and student. Grant them wisdom. Fill their hearts with love. Help them to be a blessing to all those who take part in our Vacation Bible School. And above all else, let them place their hope in Jesus Christ, who will give them strength through the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So thank you to my volunteers. We're looking forward to a great week. And kids, let's go upstairs for some children's church.
Old Testament lesson this morning can be found in Isaiah um, chapter 55, verses 6 through 9. You may find that in your Pew Bible on page 733, and I encourage you to turn there now and follow along as I read. Isaiah 55, 6 through 9. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them turn to the Lord, and he will have mercy on them, and to our God, for he will freely pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Good morning. It's good to be with you today, to have this opportunity to share with you again, and um, I've been looking forward to it. We were, a few of us, as we were robing for this service, were uh, commenting how July is probably not the best month of the year to be putting a robe on, um, a little warm, but um, you have some jokesters in this congregation. I, I'm sure some of you know that. Um, one of the persons in the, uh, uh, in the office area said, now, uh, yes, it's a little warm for a robe, but we just want you to know that if you begin to go over time, we have a heater right under your feet. <laughs> that, to me, is more like a church terrorist than a jokester. When Jay asked me uh, some time ago uh, to be here with you today as he is on vacation, he said to me, now you do what you wish as far as the sermon is concerned. Uh, I'll let you know that we have been uh, uh, doing a series uh, called Then Sings My Soul and picking out some favorite hymns. So he, he said, if you have a favorite hymn. Well, it didn't take me but a moment uh, to think of uh, the direction I wanted to go and the particular hymn. You've sung it, you've heard it sung, you've heard it played today, and it is, Great is Thy Faithfulness. Uh, my wife knows that uh, should I leave this plane of existence before she does, that that hymn is to be played at my funeral. It is, without a doubt, one of my favorites. Great is Thy Faithfulness. And so, in preparation for today, uh, my sermon's title is a very simple one, and it is, God is Faithful. Let's pray together. We're thankful, O oh God, that you are a God of faithfulness. And as we learn more about that today, may we listen to your voice and hear your word, so that when we leave here today, we might be able to share the character of God with those around us. We pray it in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> I have a question for you to ponder today, and the question is this. Is there anything God cannot do? Is there anything God cannot do? It's a question that has been asked for as long as humanity has been searching for the meaning of life. God is omnipotent, we say, all-powerful. God is omniscient, we say, all-knowing. All-powerful and all-knowing. There is nothing beyond God's power, and we may have a tendency then to say there is nothing God cannot do, but the Apostle Paul tells us that there is one thing God cannot do. You heard it read this morning in Paul's second letter to Timothy. Listen to the words again briefly that he wrote to Timothy. Paul said, if we are faithless, he, that is God, remains faithful, for he cannot disown 
He cannot deny himself. Did you catch that? He cannot deny himself. There it is. There is the one thing that God cannot do. So, if you are ever on a television quiz show and the announcer says, now for one million dollars, is there anything God cannot do? You will know the answer. And you can jump up and down and say, I've got it, I've got it. And you can scream and hug your partner and dance across the stage. And the announcer will say, what is the answer? And you will say, looking straight at the camera, God cannot deny himself. Think of the implications of that. For example, to say that God cannot deny himself, God cannot disown himself, God cannot deny his character, is to say that God cannot turn his back on his children. Let that sink in. For God to turn his back on his children would be a denial of God's own character. Comedian Steve Allen told in one of his books about his executive producer, a man by the name of Bill, Bill Harbaugh. Harbaugh, uh, according to Allen, uh, had the world's worst memory for people's names. And what was worse, he, he mangled those names that he did know. Once he tried to instruct his secretary to call Charlton Heston. And he shouted, get me uh, Charleston Houston, uh, uh, Charlton Hudson, oh, you know, Chester Moses. <laughs> but Allen wrote that the funniest thing Harbach ever said came out one day when he was trying to call to mind the title of that world famous poem by Joyce Kilmer. He said, you know, you know, only uh, what's his name can make a tree. Well, I'm, I'm glad that old what's his name has a sense of humor. We may forget about God, but God cannot forget us. It is impossible for God to forget his children. Earthly mothers and fathers may forget, may even disown their children, but God cannot. Dr. John Haynes, at one time the president of the Academy of Family Mediation, works with families that are going through divorce. Dr. Haynes said that he has had to deal with some very sad cases. He said, one chaotic family came to see me, and at one point in one meeting, they brought their 12-year-old son with them, and he made in the meeting some intelligent comments about how things could be done differently in order to meet both parents' needs. Dr. Haynes said, when I told the parents how impressed I was with the maturity of their son, they said to me, do you like him? You can have him. In this particular case, they were negotiating to see who did not get the children. We know that earthly parents may forget their children, may disown their children, but it is impossible for God to forget his children. God, says the Apostle Paul, cannot deny himself. And that brings us to what I think is another dramatic and obvious truth about the, God, the, God, uh, the character of God. God cannot go back on his word. Let that sink in. God cannot go back on his word. It is an impossibility. 
It is impossible for God to forget his promises. God cannot deny himself. Human beings may forget their promises. Human beings may go back on their word. But God cannot. A French prince in the Middle Ages was asked one time if he was faithful to his wife. And he answered, yes, frequently. That humor masks a very tragic approach to life. One of the reasons that many children are suffering today, one of the reasons that some in our younger generations today are so indifferent to human life is that moms and dads are not keeping their promises. They're putting their own feelings and their own happiness before that of their children and little lives are being scarred sometimes for a lifetime. As an old Chinese proverb says, in the broken nest there are no whole eggs. There's a story about a little boy who finally reached the age of eight. Finally, eight years old. And now he was able to play little league baseball. He has a cap. It's much too big for his head. If it weren't for his ears, he would smother in it. He has a glove. And he stands in front of the mirror, popping his fist into that glove over and over and over as he waits and waits and waits for the eternity before ball practice begins. He worries his mother to death. When are we going to practice, Mom? I think you practice on Tuesday, Jimmy, Tuesday afternoon. Jimmy says, I'd better call, better call the coach to make sure. And so he dials the coach and says, Coach, this is Jimmy. When are we going to practice? The coach says, Jimmy, we will practice Tuesday afternoon at 5 o'clock. Thanks, coach. The next morning he gets up and he says, I think I'd better check with the coach again to make sure about the time of practice. He calls the coach and the coach says, We'll practice at five, Jimmy. Thanks, coach. That afternoon, I'd better check with the coach to see about practice again. And so he, he calls to coach again. And the coach says, Tuesday afternoon at five o'clock, Jimmy. He's worrying everybody into the ground. A little after noon on Tuesday, it begins to sprinkle. His mother is ironing and she looks out the window and says, Jimmy, I sure hope it doesn't rain much. You've been so anxious to get to ball practice. About 3.30, it really begins to rain. And by 4.30, it is a downpour. And she looks toward Jimmy's direction and says, Jimmy, I'm really sorrow that, sorry that it's raining so hard. Jimmy, Jimmy, but Jimmy is gone. Off on his bicycle, his cap on, his, his uh, glove hanging on the handlebars and he drives, he rides down uh, to the ball field which is at the school and the ball field is right across the street from the coach's house. And the coach is looking out the window at the rain and says to his wife, well, it's too wet to practice today. And while he's watching the rain, he sees this, this little person standing across the street at the ball field where home plate used to be. He's up to his ankles in water. And he says to his wife, some stupid kid is over there on the ball field I guess I better go sa uh, save him. And so he gets across and sees that it's Jimmy. And he says, Jimmy, 
What are you doing here? It's raining so hard. We can't practice today. And Jimmy looks up into his coach's eyes and says, Coach, I told you I would be here. Well, poor Jimmy. He hasn't yet learned what you and I know. But we will, of course, instruct him, won't we? Don't ever say with certainty that you're going to do something. You say, if it doesn't rain. You say, if I have the time. You say, if things work out. You say, if I get through the tough schedule of my week, then I will try to be there. Jimmy will learn, won't he? I'm afraid he will. Human beings sometimes forget their promises. Human beings sometimes go back on their word. But listen, God does not, God cannot forget his promises. God cannot go back on his word. God cannot deny himself and that brings me to the final thing I want to say and it's this God cannot turn away anyone who comes to him in faith think about that for a moment God cannot turn anyone away who comes confessing their faith in Jesus Christ and repenting of their sins. It is impossible for God to reject such a person. Oh, I imagine there may be some people that God would like to turn away. At least that's the way we humans would think. Murderers, adulterers, thieves, those who gossip and bear false witness. We certainly would turn some of those persons away, but not God. Jesus said, anyone who comes to me, I will not cast out. I read a true story some time ago now about a mother named Maria and her daughter Christina. Maria and Christina lived in a poor village in Brazil. Maria's husband died when Christina was just an infant. And so Maria got a job as a maid in order to support herself and her daughter. There were no luxuries, but they got by. For 15 years, things went fairly well. But Christina became a teenager. And as we know, in any country across this earth, teenagers often have minds of their own. Christina was not interested in marrying young and raising a family like most of the other girls she grew up with in her small village. Not that she couldn't have had her pick of husbands with her olive skin and brown eyes as well as her infectious personality there was a steady stream of prospects that came to her door but she kept them all at arm's length Christina wanted to go to the city she dreamed of trading her dusty neighborhood in backwater Brazil for exciting avenues and city life just the thought of that horrified her mother. People don't know you there, Maria said. Jobs are scarce and, and, and life is cruel in the city. And besides, if you went there, what would you do to make a living? And that's what horrified Maria the most because she knew exactly what Christina would have to do as a 15-year-old to make a living. That's why her heart broke when she awoke one morning to find her daughter's bed empty. 
She knew Christina had gone and Maria knew where. And so Maria set out to try to find her and bring her back. She threw some clothes in a bag and gathered up all her money and ran out of the house to go to the bus station, but not before she had an inspired idea. On her way to the bus stop, she stopped at a drugstore and entered a, a photo booth there and spent as much money as she could on pictures of herself. With a purse full of small black and white photographs, she boarded the bus to Rio de Janeiro. And there Maria began her search. Knowing what a girl would have to do to support herself in this cruel city, Maria began with the bars and the hotels and the nightclubs, any place with a reputation for street walkers and prostitutes. She went to them all. And at each place she left her picture taped on a bathroom mirror tacked to a hotel bulletin board, fastened to the corner phone booth, and on the back of each photo she wrote a brief note. It wasn't too long before both the money and the photographs ran out, and Maria had to go home. She wept as the bus pulled out for that long journey back to her small village. A few weeks later, Christina descended a flight of hotel stairs. Her young face was tired. Her brown eyes no longer danced with youth, but spoke of pain and fear. Her laughter was broken. Her dream had become a nightmare. A thousand times over, she had longed to trade these countless beds for her secure little pallet back home. And yet that little village was, in so many ways, too far away. As she reached the bottom of the stairs, her eyes noticed a familiar face. She looked more closely, and there on the lobby mirror was a small picture of her mother. Christina's eyes burned and her throat tightened as she walked across the room and removed the little photograph. Written on the back of it was this compelling invitation. Whatever you've done, whatever you have become, it doesn't matter. Please come home. And Christina did. And so can you and I. We really can. And God will not, God cannot refuse us entrance into his family or back into his family. Perhaps it would help us if in our imagination, every time we see a cross, we imagine that it is a picture of God. And on the back of every cross, we could see these words. Whatever you've done, whatever you have become, it doesn't matter. Please come home. Human parents may turn their back on their children. God cannot. Human beings may forget their promises and go back on their word. God cannot. Human beings may reject people because of the past sins. God cannot. If anyone here this day would turn your heart completely over to God, no matter what you've done, 
no matter what you have become, God will receive you. For God can do no other. For you see, God's nature, God's name is love. There is one thing God simply cannot do. He cannot deny himself. God is faithful to his nature and therefore he is faithful to us. Let us pray. Loving God, Help us to always keep uppermost in our mind that you don't just have love, you are love itself. And Lord, as we open our hearts and minds to your presence with us today, we pray that you would help us to remember that you don't just love this world, you love us and you call us by name. As we come to you today, O oh God, in repentance for these past days, this past week, this past month, or all of our lives, We are assured today that if we come in repentance, you will forgive. Bless our lives and bless this church as we know your faithfulness. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Knowing that we always have a faithful God who calls us to come home, we are going to change our closing hymn. We will be still in the white hymnal, number 479. 479, softly and tenderly. Would you please stand and join in singing our hymn of discipleship? Mm -hmm. 